Panama's government and social movement established a dialogue table to end protests demanding the government to stop high costs of fuels and food. Right-wing groups, the media and journalists plotted to destroy left-wing political organizations with the spread of false information. And in Sri Lanka, the President of Parliament announced July 20th as a date for the election of the country's new president. Hello, welcome to From the South. I'm Luis Alberto Matos from the Telesur Studios in Havana, Cuba. We begin with the news. In Panama, the government will set up a dialogue table with the National Alliance for the rights of the organized people in order to stop the social protest. Through a communique, the executive stated that the talks will address the increase in the price of fuel and its effects on the increase in the cost of the basic food basket, services, and the cost of daily life in general. The document specifies that the intention is to find effective solutions in the shortest possible time to mitigate the impact of the international fuel crisis. Saul Mendes, the Secretary General of the Single National Union of Construction and similar workers, called for coordinated efforts and the search for concrete solutions. In Peru, once again, two branches of the government confront each other. A situation in the coastal city of Chimbote opens a new chapter between the executive and the legislature amid expression of racism and criminalization of farmers' patrols. The Ministry of Culture called for an end to the criminalization of farmers' patrols following an incident in which two journalists from a private media outlet were detained. The Peruvian constitution empowers farmer and indigenous community authorities and the patrols to exercise jurisdictional functions including detentions and interrogations in accordance with their uses and customs. Right-wing parties and several lawmakers with racist and discriminatory speeches accused the farmers' patrols of the city of Chota of kidnapping. The patrols ratified that it is not a kidnapping and that they respect human rights. At the core of the matter is the support of these communities to the administration of President Pedro Castillo. Despite the fact that the leaders and representatives of the farmers' patrols have expressed their opinions and their performance of the press, the media and right-wing political groups continue to point them out as allies of the country's presidency. I ask myself, is the president Lima doing a good job? They are damaging a whole country with bad information. That is the problem, that is my opinion. But people will no longer tolerate so much discredit because they are not hurting Castillo. They are not hurting the president of the republic or the congress. They are hurting a whole country that needs a legal press, a press that spreads the truth. The whole world mobilizes in solidarity with Cuba with expression of support coming from the five continents. They ask to remove the country from Washington's list of sponsors of terrorism. Personalities such as British musician Roger Walters or Indian historian Vijay Pradesh maintain that President Joseph Biden can eliminate the label that prevents Cuba and its people from carrying out basic functions of good living. Social movements in America have ratified that since 1959, Cuba has been the object of terrorist acts promoted by Washington. The island's most effective response is a long history of medical internationalism and solidarity. Manolo Santos, founder and co-director of the People's Forum, along with progressive movements, academics, and ordinary citizens of Europe, call for peace for Cuba and express full solidarity with the nation. We meet here in Cologne, Germany, the group of solidarity with Cuba, to celebrate Cuba, Socialist Cuba for peace, until victory always, motherland or death, we will win. The Cuban people commemorate one year after the riots provoked by manipulation campaign through the media and social networks that sought confrontation and to destabilize the country. The riots registered on July 11, 2021 made headlines around the world. As a consequence of the sanctions implemented by the administration of the former president of the United States, Donald Trump, that remained intact during the health emergency due to the COVID-19 pandemic in the middle of the economic crisis resulting from these unilateral sanctions. The responsibility of the U.S. digital platforms was relevant during the 48 hours of riots because with great speed they managed to spread hatred and create a climate of catastrophe. The mobilization of the people together with the leaders of the Cuban revolution was a key factor in stopping the soft coup the violence and recovering the peace in the country.
In Colombia, four ministers of the government of President Ivan Duque have been linked by the Special Jurisdiction for Peace, the GEP, to the investigation into alterations of the country's historical memory. The Minister of Justice, Wilson Ruiz, the Minister of Defense, Diego Molano, the Minister of Culture, Angelica Maria Mayolo, and the Minister of Education, Maria Victoria Angulo, must answer to the GEP for the controversy of the National Center for Historical Memories Exhibition Voices to Transform Colombia. The victims and relatives of the conflict denounced that the exhibition altered their stories and information to avoid mentioning paramilitarism. The ministers have three days to explain the manipulation of the stories. We'll take a short break now. Join us again after this. Welcome back to From the South. In Spain, the media leaked some audios that compromised the former leader of the party, Junto Podemos, and several state authorities with the aim of creating a slander campaign against the leftist coalition. Local media reported on the illegal espionage plot against Junto Podemos since 2014, organized by the Ministry of the Interior during the last government of the Popular Party. In this sense, the plot was executed by high political and police officials, who created false evidence to incriminate Junto Podemos and progressive representatives. Despite the evidence and documents supporting these allegations were false, the country's private media, the most popular one, spread them as true. In time, the former leader of Podemos party, Pablo Iglesias, one of the most affected, assured that he has been one more victim of Spanish democracy. And from here, I think it's very difficult to talk about that in Spain, there is full democracy. It is very serious what we are seeing. We are seeing a minister of defense and the police conspiring with a journalist, which is the most serious part, to do electoral damage to a political party and destroy the reputation of its leader, in this case of me, when I was secretary general of Podemos, something that on the other hand continues, even though all that information was practically garbage. On Monday, family and friends of Japan's assassinated former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe paid their respects at a wake in Tokyo. Japan's ruling coalition meanwhile declared victory in a somber election held Sunday just two days after he was gone down on the campaign trial. trail. Abe's body was moved from his family home to the Sojoji Temple on Monday afternoon where his wake is being held ahead of tomorrow's private funeral. Public memorials for him are expected at a later date with no immediate plans set for the events. Chinese State Council and Foreign Minister Wang Ji discussed cooperation with Indonesian President Hoko Widodo in Jakarta and paid a visit to the Asian Secretariat. Wang and Widodo started off their meeting by talking about the Ukrainian crisis. This was also mentioned during Wang's speech at the Asian Secretariat in Jakarta. He said the world should not be pressured to take sides and instead work together to find a solution to resolve the conflict. They went on to discuss China and Indonesia relations, especially in terms of trade, with both saying they would like to see more Indonesian products enter the Chinese market in the coming years. One believes a closer relationship with Indonesia will not only help both countries grow stronger, but also maintain stability in the Asian region. The U.S. company Uber managed to penetrate major cities with a strategy based on breaking laws, cheating, and lobbying in high places. This has been demonstrated in more than 124,000 documents that make up the Uber files investigations carried out by the International Consortium of Journalists. The leak of documents dated between 2013 and 2017 exposes the practices of the person who led it, Travis Kalinick. The executive flattered heads of government, ministers, tycoons, senior public officials, including the French president when he was minister of economy, even leaving a record of a secret agreement between Macron and Kalanik. The businessman also promoted violence clashes against cab drivers in various cities and boasted of the illegal actions that characterized the company.
The United Nations stated that it had documented more than 23,000 grave violations committed against children in 2021, an average of over 65 per day. According to the latest edition of the Animal Children Armed Conflict Report, the killing and maiming of children was the most recurring of the grave violations that the UN verified during 2021, followed by the recruitment and use of children in armed conflicts and the denial of humanitarian access. According to the agency, most of these abuses occur in Afghanistan, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Israel, and the occupied Palestinian territories, Somalia, Syria, and Yemen. In response, the UN Secretary General Special Representative for Children and Armed Conflict, Virginia Gamba, called for more work to be done to better protect children in armed conflict. The death toll from rain-related incidents in Pakistan over the past month has risen to 147 as monsoon rains continue to lash the country, triggering flash floods in some parts. The National Disaster Management Authority said that 88 women and children were among the dead so far. Monsoon rains also damaged homes, roads, bridges, and power stations across the country. The situation was particularly dire in the major southern port city of Karachi, the country's largest, where entire neighborhoods remained submerged on Monday. The rains are said to be almost twice as heavy as the average downpour at this time of the year. Experts say climate change is the cause for the heavier than average downpour in Pakistan. At the moment the situation is, we need to travel by boat rather than in cars. The roads are full of water, the situation is almost the same all over the city. People are pushing their vehicles in flooded water. With the grace of God, so far, I am well, and my car is moving fine. The only thing is, I was supposed to reach my destination in one hour, but now it may take three hours. The government is sleeping doing nothing. And we have more news coming up after a final short break, so don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. In Sri Lanka, authorities announced Monday the election day for the country's new president as President Gotabaya Rajapaksa is set to resign on Wednesday. The head of parliament, Mahin Najapa Bewardena, said leaders of the country's political parties decide to set July 20th for the election of the country's new president under normal conditions. The president of Sri Lanka is elected for five years through general elections. Both for the transfer of the presidential office in a special situation, including the resignation of the president before the end of his term, the country's constitution provides for another mechanism. The new president is elected for the remaining period of the term through a vote of parliamentarians. Last Saturday, protesters stormed the residence of President Raya Paksa, breaking through the security perimeter of the building. The president himself managed to leave the area before he was taken over by demonstrators. The most important places of the state. Thereby, they 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 were able to they were able to chase away the the corrupt president, the prime minister, and the whole government. So they are still in power in, in law, but there is no president, no prime minister, no government at the time. They they have been chased away by the people's power. That's the main thing, important thing. Those Syria and Iran call for further strengthening and joint cooperation to face future challenges, said Syrian President Bashar al-Assad and Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi as they congratulate each other on the celebration of Eid al-Adha, the Muslim festival of sacrifice. During a telephone conversation, the heads of state exchanged wishes for the prosperity and well-being of both peoples and for the advancement of bilateral ties. They also address fundamental issues such as increasing the channels of binational cooperation, taking into account the inclusion of new areas that allow the materialization of the interests of the two countries and their peoples. 
Both presidents also ratified that they are permanently monitoring the implementation of the agreements already signed to protect and consolidate cooperation between both countries committed to the fight against terrorism. Hundreds of thousands of Muslim pilgrims performed the last day of stoning the Devil's Pillar in Mina on Monday. As part of the annual Hajj, pilgrims throw pebbles at three large pillars that mark the places where the devil tried to interrupt Ibrahim's sacrifice. Muslims believe the devil tried to talk Ibrahim out of submitting to God's will. Pilgrims stoned the devil to signify overcoming temptation. One million Muslims from around the world traveled last week to the holy city of Mecca, the largest pilgrimage since the pandemic upended the event. All Muslims who are physically and financially able to complete the journey are supposed to do so at least once in a lifetime. Thank God it is a great joy, first, to do the rituals, and second, due to the simplicity of the hash. It was so easy to do the pilgrimage, thank God, because we were hearing in the past how crowded it used to be. But with the Crown Prince vision, 2030, there has been a lot of development, and it included the sacred sites. I'm, uh, I'm feeling very happy. I perform. It's a, it's a blessing for my family and me to come here for a second time. I, I thank God to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given me the opportunity to perform the Hajj. In Russia, the country temporarily suspends gas supplies to Europe through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline. The Nord Stream company informed that two pipelines will be deactivated from July the, the 11th to the 21st, and during that period, a test of mechanical components and automation systems will be carried out in order to ensure the efficient and safe operation of the pipeline. The statement added that for the duration of the work, the only way to provide Russian gas to Western and Central Europe is by means of transit pipelines through Ukraine. The Russian state-owned Gazprom said that the Ukrainian side confirmed demands through this route in the amount of 40 million cubic meters per day, a figure which, in its opinion, does not meet the region's demand. Also in Russia, President Vladimir Putin and his Belarus counterpart Alexander Lukashenko held a telephone conversation during which they discussed issues concerning the blockade of Kaliningrad. During the conversation, they discussed possible joint steps to find a solution to the blockade imposed by Lithuania on the Russian city. The heads of state confirmed the readiness to strengthen bilateral relations. Moreover, the leaders discussed the exchange of goods from Belarus to Russia through the ports of St. Petersburg as a measure to circumvent the blockade imposed by the West. Regarding the supply of energy resources to Europe, Putin assured that he would comply with his commercial commitments and would guarantee the energy supply demanded by the Western countries. In an unusual statement, Ukrainian Defense Minister Oleksiy Resnikov admitted that his troops had suffered heavy casualties. In an interview to a U.S. media, Resnikov said platoons must be supplied, changed, and replaced because they have suffered heavy casualties. The Ukrainian Defense Minister also informed that they do not have the necessary armaments, especially drones. Resnikov also denounced that the M142 high-mobility artillery rocket system delivered by the United States do not have softwares that allow them to fight against Russia. Recently, the Russian Ministry of Defense spokesman stated that the Ukrainian troops could have lost more than 70,000 men. Telesurie English continues to grow. Its signal now raises Europe. You can order from your cable dealer, tune it yourself. These parameters that you see on screen are in place since July 1st. Quite soon, for a change, will be implemented for the signals in the Middle East and Africa. Now more than ever, the world connects to us and our stories are heard in other faraway nations. This new small platform will continue providing truthful content to oppose the hegemony media. We have come to the end of this news. Un canto por la